Hi and welcome to this tutorial on set scores and how to calculate them. Now, set scores can be particularly useful when we want to compare more than one questionnaire that have been measured on different scales. So, by transforming our data into set scores, we are able to, to standardize them and therefore compare them. Uh, I'm going to revise some very simple uh, concepts along the way and just show you uh, how to get a particular set score. So I would like to start with a definition of what a z-score is. And a z-score is a measure of distance in terms of standard deviations. As the definition says, we are usually interested in making comparisons with respect to the mean, or in other words, the average, of a population. This definition is then best uh, illustrated with a normal distribution of the population, also known as the bell curve. The area under the curve then represents the entire population and the dividing line in the middle would correspond to a standard deviation of a zero. Standard deviation is here represented with the Greek letter sigma or a SD if we are using APA notation. And a zero a sigma in the middle makes sense since this is where the average or mean of the population goes. In other words, that's the starting point of reference and any deviation from it towards the right-hand side of the distribution or above the mean can take positive values up to three standard deviations. In the same way, deviations to the left-hand side would take negative values respectively. So let's suppose we have some uh, IQ data with a mean of 100 and that you also took the intelligence test and obtained a score of 128. So the question is, how much does your IQ differ with respect to that of most people? And said score allows us to measure this in terms of standard deviations from the mean. Here we have the formula to calculate a Z score, where Z equals to X, that is our value, minus the mean of the population, in this case 100, uh, represented by the Greek letter mu. And the product of that then is divided by a sigma or the standard deviation. However, since in psychology we deal with samples of the population, that is portions of the population randomly selected, the nomenclature for this formula vary in some uh, textbooks. But if we pay attention, it is fundamentally just the same. So we have a, our IQ score of 128 minus our mean, which is 100. That will give us 28. And that divided by, say, standard deviation of a 14. Remember, standard deviation is a measure of the dispersion of the data with respect to the mean. So we are assuming here that, simply put, our IQ data tends to differ by 14 points with respect to the mean. And so we have that 28 uh, divided by 14 equals 2.0. And as mentioned, this is in terms of number of standard deviations. Again, we know that the mean corresponds to a standard deviation or sigma of 0. Therefore, if we add 14 points to our mean, that would give us an IQ value of 114, which would mean that we have deviated from the mean one standard deviation. And the corresponding set uh, value would be 1.0, uh, shown in red below. If we then add yet another 14 points, that would correspond to an IQ score of 128, reaching our uh, value in this case, and that would correspond to two standard deviations from the mean, and we know that, that it's equivalent to a Z value of 2.0, and so on and so forth. Let's analyze this further. We know that the bell represents the entire population, and so splitting it in half, would give us 50% below the mean, and the other half of the distribution would represent the, uh, 50, the other 50% of the population. 
But in psychology, we tend to talk about percentage using also standard deviations, also referred as the empirical rule. So as we can see in this graph, the area in yellow enclosed within the minus one and one standard deviations corresponds to 68% uh, of the population or our sample. And each standard deviation above or below the mean is contributing or representing 34% of uh, this portion of the data. Similarly, if we add yet another standard deviation to each side, that would represent 95% of uh, our sample. And if we have three standard deviations uh, below and above the mean, we would have covered 99% of the entire population. So what is the probability of obtaining an IQ score that is less than 128? Well, we know that half is 50%, and one standard deviation more is adding 34%, and one more will add 13.5%. So in this case, we know that approximately 97% of people are likely to have an IQ below a 128. Inversely, this also tells us that 2.5% have an IQ greater than 128, or that the probability of somebody having an intelligence score higher than you is 0.02. Let's suppose now that we have a different IQ score, in this case 120. We're using the same sample, so our mean remains 100 and standard deviation 14. So following the Z formula, we now have a Z score of 1.42. In this case, our Z value would be somewhere almost in between a standard deviation of 1 and 2. We know that half is 50%, but we are not so sure about the rest, in particular as it corresponds to the decimals of our set score. There is an easy way to determine this, uh, how much does our set score is in terms of percentage. For this, we can consult a set table, which can be found in most statistical books or is easily available on internet, as I uh, did here. So using this table, we look for the first two digits of our Z score. Uh, that would be on the leftmost uh, column of the table. So we scroll down until we find a number in that column that matches our uh, Z score. In this case, that corresponds to 1.4. And for the second decimal of our set score, we then look at the top row, as we can see here. And where these two values intersect, we'll find the information that we need stated in probability. So we have a 0.422. And so there we have it. We know now that a Z score of 1.42 corresponds to 42.2%. Um, and from this point, it's just a matter of adding those values. So we know that 92% of the population is likely to have an IQ score below 120. And that concludes our explanation. It is worth pointing out that the calculation here assumed a normal distribution. In cases where the sample is skewed, a different table would be required if one were to manually uh, calculate the z-score as demonstrated here. As a final note, transforming data into z-scores allow us to compare different data sets or uh, scales, for example, that use different, uh, that have different means or standard deviations or range of values. So we can see the use of this uh, calculation, especially when we are doing some research that involve more than one scale.